Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jeffersonian Air Lecture, specifically on the Louisiana Purchase, its impact, and what it did and how it came about. But before we start that, we have to take a look at what happened to get Jefferson here. Remember, he's he's been a part of uh, the United States formation, Declaration of Independence. He was gone for the Constitutional Convention in France, a part of uh, Washington's cabinet as uh, Secretary of State. Uh, he goes from there. He steps down to run against John Adams and loses in 1796 and then runs in 1800 where he wins and you can see uh, the vote was super close he wins it though uh, and you can see it's just between these two however remember uh, that how uh, running for president was set up it was the first candidate was president second one was vice president and so that was set up without parties we get parties Burr's running as his vice president. Someone forgot to not vote once to give Jefferson the most. So then this had to go to Congress, goes to Congress, or, and each state gets one vote, but it's a Federalist Congress. And so who are they going to vote for? A lesser of two evils. Burr, who has no opinion on anything and leadership is a little shaky, or their hated rival Democratic Republican Thomas Jefferson. Thankfully, the person that helps Jefferson win is Alexander Hamilton, who says, let's take lesser of two evils, although I hate many of his opinions, at least he has opinions, let's put him as president. And this will allow for the revolution of 1800, coined by Jefferson, basically the peaceful transition of power from one party to another that we are so accustomed with with makes our democracy work. Now he takes over. The same time that he takes over in France, we oui, we oui, little man Napoleon will make himself first consul and and then soon after emperor of France. And he had imperial ambitions in America. He's going to take the Louisiana territory uh, from Spain with hopes of uh, making it larger to the point where it's Historians think he might have invaded the United States if he could have and taken it over after his conquest of Europe. However, conquest of Europe takes uh, precedent for him. Uh, he also has some soldiers that die, which kind of turns him away from trying to create this Western empire. Uh, and so he is looking to sell. But before he sells, he does some things with New Orleans that really put uh, Jefferson at risk uh, politically and might make him go to war. Now what happens is that he stops trading or allowing trade, the United States, to trade out of New Orleans. And most of the agrarian uh, farmers in the west of the United States at this time used the Mississippi to get their goods down to New Orleans and then on ocean-bearing ships and out to the world. He stops that. And so Jefferson's in between a rock and a hard place. One, he can go to war with France to gain that back in New Orleans. He got that from the Pinckney's Pic Treaty, but Spain doesn't control it anymore. So he could go to war. He starts building up a war. He says, hey, we might have to go to war. And this is cray-cray. He says, we might have to have an alliance with Great Britain. What? A Democratic Republican wanting an alliance with Great Britain? No one ever thought it, but remember Jefferson is a very practical leader, and so he understands this, and we'll see that with the Louisiana Purchase, that it might have to happen. Number two is do nothing and lose his uh, agrarian population base for the Democratic Republican Party. He chooses neither of these options, actually. He sends uh, basically a delegation. Robert Livingston is always, already kind of the ambassador of France, and he's there. Sends James Monroe, who will later be a president, to help negotiate this, uh, to try to buy New Orleans from France. Livingston kind of takes it upon himself to uh, basically ask for the kind of the state of Louisiana Napoleon, who is desperate as he starts to go to war with Europe again, uh, actually says, hey, I'll just sell you the whole thing. And they agree on a price of $15 million to double the size of the United States. Yes, let me say that again. $15 million to double the size of the United States, although the boundaries are a little unclear for a long time where those lines are it's going to double and an acre is only three cents which equals about 42 cents today you have to take that but here's the problem jefferson being a part of the democratic republican party 
believes in what type of interpretation of the Constitution? If you said strict, you are absolutely 100% right. He believes in a strict interpretation of the Constitution because it protects states. Okay? Strict, not this proper and necessary clause that Hamilton used to get the financial system through, which the Democratic Republicans hated. Okay? But a strict. This is nowhere to be found in the Constitution. And so he kind of has to say, what do I do? His idea is to get an amendment, but an amendment would take a lot of time. He'd have to get it through Congress. Then he'd have to get it ratified by the states. By then, Napoleon might pull his offer. We can't do that. And so his advisors say, hey, this is kind of a part of the treaty-making power under the Constitution. And because it was a, Rep a Democratic-Republican Congress, they passed it quickly. And so we have the Louisiana Purchase. But I wonder, in our day and age of politics, would the Federalists, if they had controlled Congress, pass this based on how it made the United States a lot stronger? Or would they have said, we hate Thomas Jefferson, so no, we won't pass this? Interesting question. I don't know. I would hope they would pass it. Or we would not be here. I guess when I say we, I grew up in Washington. So me, not you. You'd be still part of the Spanish. Okay, and so this is what we get. It's beautiful. It's huge. Okay? However, we're not really sure of these boundaries. And so Thomas Jefferson is going to send the Lewis and Clark expedition. Meriwether Lewis on the left here. Uh, he was born in Virginia, lived in Georgia, moved back to Virginia in his teen years, uh, joined the army, became part of uh, George Washington's army that put down the Whiskey Rebellion, and then becomes Thomas Jefferson's personal secretary, where he'll get this job. Once he uh, is told, hey, you're going to lead this expedition, he starts studying like crazy for it, trying to get prepared, and also asks for William Clark to join him, who, also born in Virginia, although they did not know each other then, lived in Kentucky, became a part of a militia, and actually fought uh, with Lewis, and that's how they got to know each other. They join together. They'll get about 45 men together, 27 of them unmarried, one French interpreter, one slave of Lewis's, and they are off. They will start in uh, April of 1804 from St. Louis and head out. Now, this trip will take uh, two years. They'll travel over 8,000 miles and this is the, the map uh, of their journey. Okay, There will be hardships upon it. Uh, they will come across numerous different uh, Native American tribes where they'll be as peaceful as possible, although they have uh, great ammunition <laughs> stores that they brought with them just in case. At Fort Mendan, right there in the middle, and let's see if we can highlight it, right there, they are going to come across a French trapper who has a wife, and wife's name Sacagawea. She and him will join the expedition. She is pregnant with a child, will have it on this journey, and basically become their guide, their diplomat, because Native American tribes, when they see Sacagawea and a baby, don't think these men are coming in t uh, into their lives to create war, rather peace. And so it was huge having her on this journey and might be one of the reasons for the biggest success. They only had one person die. It was a young man who had appendicitis. Although they'll have one run in with Native American warriors who were trying to steal some goods, about eight of them, they'll kill two of them. And another injury where Lewis on a hunting excursion got shot in the butt. Other than that, it's pretty good, although it will take two years. They'll get back in September of 1806 to St. Louis. Now, what's the key about this expedition? And it's awesome to dive into it. I grew up in the uh, Lewiston Clarkston Valley. They call it the LC Valley. Okay, we have Lewis Clark State College there, known for its baseball, uh, NAIA. Uh, and, and so it will have a lot or a legacy about it because they'll discover they'll make a route out to the pacific ocean that will be followed as people expand 
They will uh, start forming relations with numerous Native American tribes, which they'll tell them this is now America's land. Let's be peaceful until you don't want us to live there, and then we'll we'll take you off it. But as of now, we're good. And more importantly, it changes the dynamic of the United States. Now, this uh, Louisiana Purchase will uh, be broken up just like the Northwest Territory, start to be sold. You're going to start getting what we now consider kind of the Western frontier. We don't really think of the old Northwest Territory as West. We now get that. We start getting people expanding West. And this will really help the Democratic Republican Party because this is going to be the idea of agrarian society, right? All this new land for farming, this will really hurt the Federalists. And so they're going to be at this decline, especially after Jefferson uh, takes office. So that's the in purchase. We get it. Maybe not constitutionally, but we get it. Doubles the territory. We're okay with it. That'll set the president to take more land later. And we start moving westward. Jefferson, nice job. 